Uh, Am I on voice or screen? Yeah, oh, you're sorry. on. It's over to you, Simon. Hello, all. Hello, everyone. I'm just going to work out how we're doing this so I can see it. Ah, oh, there we go. Delish! Have you said Cheese Fest? Uh, thank you all for joining us. I don't know how many people are really here, but I'm, I'm guessing a few are joining. Hello, Jared and friend. <laughs> Hello, all. Quickly, everyone, if you've got a time, you can put your video on so I can wave at you and, and wave back. Oh, what fun. Look at everyone. Hello, all. Ah, oh, g'day. Oh, my gosh. It's fantastic. Oh, I've got a big smile on my face today. That's really going to really gonna top off my Saturday. How fantastic is that? Right. For those who are joining, I'm going to take a little bit of an intro here. Um, a couple of things on the list. If, you are, if you're cooking along, delicious. Uh, make sure you've got your blender set up or a food processor. I've got a mortar and pestle. I don't know if you can see that. It's hiding behind the pasta. I've got a mortar and pestle because, you know, less power, the better. Uh, and I've already got a blender over there as well. But depending where you got. Uh, utensils, knife is pretty much all you want. Uh, maybe a mixing spoon. Uh, laptop, that's a definite. And I'm pretty sure you've already started that anyway. Uh, oven at 180 degrees. Large pot of boiling water going. If you haven't already, chuck it on now. It'll be boiling by the time we get to it. Um, the quantities I think are measured out for most people. But if not, measure it out as uh, as we go. I'll go super slow. Um, just so everyone can keep up with it. Um, and then, and of course, the most important, the classical, you know, Saturday evening bev, everyone, whether it's just a, a glass of water, a soda water, or a, someone's, someone's sculling their bottle of oat milk, you legend. <laughs> That's amazing. So, you know, whatever you got to sip on, whatever your tipple is, go for it. Uh, and then veggie oil, um, or grapeseed oil, or salt and pepper, um, and salt and pepper, definitely salt and pepper. So, uh, if you can, um, actually, Rachel, I can't see any questions on the, maybe if I have a look at the chat section. Ah, delicious. No, I can. Awesome. So, if anyone's got any questions, chuck them on the chat section. Uh, I want people to just ask as many as you want. Um, have a go at me if you want. Uh, pay out people that are uh, sell, asking silly. No, don't do that. Uh, just definitely ask questions. And when I've got a few uh, moments in between each cooking session, I'll come around um, and uh, and answer the questions. And the first one's already there. Jared, Jared and Sonia, you two are going to be my uh, my nemesis on this cook, aren't you? There, there can be garlic on this recipe. If you want to add garlic, absolutely go ahead. Um, uh, put it with the milk, and I'll I'll talk you through that. Um, Oh yes, and uh, and also the and you can use garlic whenever you want from there as well, and um, yeah, absolutely, and obviously of course, in paying respects to elders past and present, uh, we are in the Wenjuri country, um, and it's really important that we do that. So thank you everyone for being a part of this right now. It's absolutely fantastic, uh, and thank you again, Jared and Sonia, for reminding me. I had that on my notes as well to do it, but. Uh, you got me to it as well. All right, here we go. Let's get started. Let's get started. We are going to, first of all, throw our pan on. That's going to hang out nice and warm. I've got an induction one here, gas one. I've got my water boiling. I don't know if you can see that over in the corner here. That'll just plug away. Uh, I'm going to put this on a sort of a medium low. Uh, and we've first of all got our ingredients. So just making sure that we have our onion. And of course, Jared and Sonia, our garlic, which is somewhere here, I think. Maybe I didn't do it because I didn't have any garlic. <laughs> somewhere, oh, I lost my rosemary. Not one clove. How bad is that? How does someone not have garlic in their house? Oh, I've got this. Maybe I'll use this. This is maple garlic. Oh my gosh, look at this. I probably should start cooking because we're not going to have food ready by the time we're done. But this here is. Um, heaps of garlic heaps of garlic and then i put maple syrup into it and then put it in a jar and close the lid and then you just keep opening and closing and all the enzymes from uh the garlic and the maple because it usually does it with honey but of course not honey and it ferments uh beautifully in there and then you use that for dressings uh on toast with a bit of um like oat butter or something like that it's absolutely amazing so i'm gonna use that there we go yeah you ask me to use garlic i'll you know, take another leaf. 
What's the word, Allah? I'll raise you, I'll raise you maple, maple garlic. Okay, half an onion. Putting a bit of oil in our pan to start with. So a bit of veggie or grapeseed oil. Now we don't really want this to smoke. What we're trying to do here is just get flavors to come out because we're adding our cauliflower, we're adding our milk, our oat milk, we're adding um, our nutritional yeast flakes. So if you start getting color from the onions, you're gonna get that sort of roasty flavor, that sort of toasty notes. And what we're really trying to do is just add sweetness. Um, so taking a knife, cutting it in half. I don't know how well you can see everything, but cutting it in half, always leaving the stem on. It's really quite a great trick to leave the stem on here uh, because then when you take the top off, right, it's gonna hold the onion at the back. And so you don't have to find yourself trying to juggle, trying to keep the onion from falling apart. Uh, compost, everything we're doing today as well. Well, compost bin on the side there. So taking the paper off, this is great. Another trick that I keep sort of going on about is using all the papers you use for onions, for garlic or the skin or what do you want to call it, uh, put it in a bag and in the freezer. A uh, fantastic thing to do after that once you start filling it up and all the little butts of the onions and stuff that's going a little bit south, like fennel, some carrots, some celery, put it in the freezer and then at the end of the week or the month or whatever, cut it all up and start making it into stock. A really beautiful uh, way to make gorgeous vegetable stock basically free right you have to go and buy cubes you have to go buy anything it's all there for you um so leaving that aside so when i talk about dicing all i'm doing is then getting my onion i'm going to do a quick cross section watching your fingers of course quick cross section just at the top just really like three quarters of the way up and then half the way up again and then quarter of the way up again awesome so i've got three cuts one two three and then holding it, sort of now turning the onion towards you, we're just going to make our way down the onion cross-sectioning like this. And now we've got our cross-sections, we've got our down-sections. Aren't I scientific? I'm so scientific about how I'm telling you how to do this. But you get what I mean, right? Like you understand. Cross-sections, down-sections. And then you've got already a dices set up. So you've got the sections from the onions, the layers, and you've got your two cuts. And all we're now going to do is cut an onion like you would you know, barbecue onions. Everyone knows barbecue onions. And so what you're getting here, what you're getting here, I'm going to come to the camera, which is really great. Look at this. I'm going to come to the camera. Look at that, look at that. Little dices, right? doesn't have to be perfect. But if you've done that, legends out there, if you've done that, 10 points, you can wrap that up on the chalkboard on the side. Uh, we're going to come back to the chalkboard at the end of the segment and, um, uh, and we're going to see who wins. <laughs> Does the recipe feed four? It will feed four. I like to put a, um, a salad on the side. So I've got some cos and some tomatoes and some cucumber, bit of vinaigrette, happy days. Um, really good way. It should be fine. My puppy just arrived home and she is soaking wet. Oh gosh. Okay, right, back to it. So oil is warm. Uh, onions in with the oil. Look, you can use a whole onion if you want to as well. Really, this recipe is a rule of thumb, everybody. So don't feel like you have to put the onion to the side and go, oh, well, we're only using half. Use it all if you like. You are more than welcome to. Move this to... This isn't sponsored by Breville. So what I'm gonna say here is don't ever buy a Breville induction cooker. This thing burns everything. Right, mix it around. So I'm just gonna let that saute and do its thing. Now, while that's doing that, the bum of the onion, this little bit here, goes into my bag for my stock later on. Back over here, clean off your chopping board, everybody. Make sure you're nice and tidy. I'm keeping an eye on you. I can't hear you, so I can't hear you answering back at me. Perfect. Right, cauliflower. If you want to add, if you're doing it for more, let's just say you've got five or six, seven, eight people in a household, or you want some from down the line, a whole cauliflower, go for it. Absolutely fine. Now we're gonna cut this into a fine sort of, um, just a fine cut, because rough but fine, because the finer it is, the quicker it's gonna cook. It's quite simple as that. Uh, you can do it quite thick and then roast it and do it that way, but the color won't be that sort of wonderful mac and cheese-esque color. So just again with a knife, straight down. We're gonna take the stem with us as well. Oh no, shoot me. I don't care if it's a little bit woody, a little bit tough. I'm going to cook it down so it's super soft and then we're blending it. So we're not wasting any food here, which is fantastic. And if you think about the size of the cauliflower, 
that's a good quarter of the cauliflower right there. So I don't want to throw that out. The amount of people that can feed is perfect. And I'm cooking for home. I'm not cooking for and then charging people money for the food. It's still going to be absolutely gorgeous. So shaving down the edges. Now I can see if I can see that uh, that question time going off. I'll come over in a second once I've cut, cut the cauliflower up. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, stem is done. Cut the stem as fine as you can as well because obviously the stem is quite dense and will cook slower than the cauliflower florets. Okay, I'm coming around. Make sure my onions are looking good. I missed a start. What did I miss? You just missed a whole lot of hilarity. That's all it was, Becca. You're absolutely fine. Um, but dice up your garlic. Uh, sorry, dice up your onion. Uh, dice up your garlic if you have some as well. There isn't any in the recipe, but everyone usually has garlic at home. So dice up a couple of those. Don't forget, we're blitzing this. So you're okay if you haven't really cut it up perfectly. Okay. Um, lentil, yes. Okay, it is lentil. <laughs> uh, awesome. All right, cool. That's everything. Hello, Peter. Oh, wait. That was my partner, by the way, not uh, everyone on the screen, if anyone heard that. So my onions are looking. Looking beautiful and sweaty downy. Really happy with how it's looking. You're back now, okay. though. Oh, we're back, everyone. Can yes. everyone give us a thumbs up to say we're back? Okay, great. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, I can see people coming back online as well. Okay, thanks, everyone. Okay, so um, I cut the collie up. I put the collie up in, I put the collie in with the onion and the garlic, everyone. And I'm just frying it off really briefly. And then I'm going to add all my other ingredients, okay? So we've got the rosemary. I'm just going to remind myself as well. So we've got rosemary and thyme. Where's my rosemary and thyme? So rosemary and thyme, everyone, in with the cauliflower. Beautiful. And that should start smelling really lovely, everyone, once that sort of, those aromats start hitting that gorgeous heat. And all those oils start to release. Mm. And there's something about cooking cauliflower that I really, really love. Of course, and onion and garlic. Nutritional yeast flakes. It's like crack, really, isn't it? It's so good. You know, you can pretty much put it in everything. Uh, that's in there. And then we've got <laughs> milk. So our oat milk. Putting a liter in. Because I've halved this recipe, so I want to make sure I get this right. Yeah, later. Cool. Beautiful. And then pour it all over the machine. No wonder this thing doesn't like me. I keep breaking it. All right, everyone. Cleaning up your station. I'm going to actually, you know what's going to be great about this? Is I'm going to make sure that your station is going to be fully clean as well. So when it's time to eat, everything is packed down. How good is that? Now, Simon, at this stage, I want... Yep. Everyone's asking you for a recap for when you were frozen. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, great. Okay, coming in for a recap. Am I still, am I unfrozen now, Rachel? Just a quick. Okay, everyone. We're going to do a full recap for everyone that's there. Everyone have a glass of wine or whatever their chosen beverage is. Someone has a litre of oat milk to sip on. What we've done now, I'm going to show it to you on my, my left. In this pot here, we started off with oil. And then we diced up our onion and put our onion in with the oil. All we've done is we've cooked that at a low, medium heat to sweat it off. Yes. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, to sweat it off and um, make it nice and translucent and sweet. We really want the sweetness coming out of the onions. We don't really want to brown them. If you brown them, oh, no, whatever. You're cooking at home. It's a beautiful thing. It's fine. So try and set them off as opposed to browning. If you do, fine. Add your garlic. Cook as well. Trying to get those two flavors to match together. Really wonderful combination. We diced up our cauliflower and we've added our cauliflower to the same pot, stirred it around again. And then now we've added all the other ingredients. So we've added our, our oat milk, we've added our thyme, we've added our rosemary, we've added our nutritional yeast flakes, and now I'm gonna add some salt and some pepper. And that should bring you up to right where I am now. Do we cut up the rosemary? No, leave the rosemary whole because we're gonna take it out at the end. So if you strip it off and put it in, you know, you, and then you blitz it up, you find it gets quite bitter. So I wanna take the rosemary stem out, the same with the thyme. Um, any other questions? 
We are way behind. Can you slow down, please? Sorry, Rachel. Uh, can you please just give us a quick recap? Can uh, can I get a couple of messages on the chat to let me know if everyone's okay where we're up to? And I will just very slowly proceed. We haven't done any of the liquids yet. Okay, no worries. Can we start again there? Totally. All right. I'll show you from here. Let me get close up so you can actually have a good view. Make sure you got some pasta water or some water on the boil. In my pot here, which I'll bring over a bit more. I don't know if you can see it all. I'll bring it more to the center because we've pretty much done all the cooking. In my pot here, I have my onions, my garlic, my cauliflower, my nutritional yeast flakes, my rosemary, and my thyme, some salt, which I will get now, some salt. Yep, season as much as you like. We can taste it at the end. You can add more later, okay? So just, you can always add, can't take away. And then black pepper. Again, as much as you like. I'm doing about maybe six or seven turns because I absolutely adore black pepper. One of my favorites. How are we doing, everyone? Am I going too fast? Maybe I should talk a little slower. I'm a big fan of talking very fast as well. You're fine. It's just because keep... you were frozen. Oh, cool. You're all good now. Uh, great. So I'm sorry I keep going back and forward as well. Um, back on track. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Um, so what was I going to say? I keep coming around because I can't actually see the writing. I think I need glasses. But anyway, right. We're going to put this, bring this to the boil now and then reduce uh, the heat down to a medium, medium low and just cook it until the cauliflower is super, super soft. That's it. Really, really simple. We're not putting the mozzarella, plant-based mozzarella in yet because if you put it in now, plant-based cheeses and also regular cheeses, but plant-based cheeses uh, have a tendency to split quite easily because there's a lot more oil involved with making them. Uh, and so I don't want to boil that over, split it entirely and turn it into a, a mess. So bring this to the boil. Once it hits the boil, turn it down, let it go. So I'm going to push this to the side. If you want, you can put a lid, lid on to speed up the process, uh, but you do want to reduce it down just a little bit. Okay. Over here, we are going to make our crumble. Now, I guess in many ways, you know, a lot of mac and cheeses, it kind of has that molten top, but I, I love, uh, and the same thing when you do, like you can use this if you want to make lasagna, a great way to make lasagna. You know, you do your, your tomato sauce, you do this as your creamy white sauce and you have your lasagna sheets. It's perfect. And then when you get to the top, I love to add like a crunchy element, a crumble element. So we've got some breadcrumbs here. I'm just going to come around and make sure everyone's okay. With the cauliflower and the oat milk, does the rosemary go in the liquids with the cauliflower? Yes, it does, along with the thyme. So rosemary and thyme with the liquids, and then the oregano goes in with the crumble. Cool, that's great. Um, now, so you can use a, a classic sort of hand blitzer. I got one of those here. Here we go, I'll just show you quickly. Gosh, don't listen to the sound of everything falling. So you know the ones zzz, 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 with a little face. You can use one of those if you've got one. Go for it. Um, but I also felt that, you know, in the, in, the, in the area that we're in, time is a big issue. So if I go slowly breaking everything down, then you can do whatever you like uh, in the meantime. If not, you can also just chop these, right? You can just use a knife. But i got my almonds here. So I'm going to put my almonds in first because they're the hardest of them all. If you've got... If you haven't got almonds, and I know everyone's got their sort of product, but if you haven't got almonds, macadamias would work beautifully. Um, you could use, I mean, I guess you could use roasted peanuts, uh, any sort of hard style nut. Things like cashews and um, uh, pine nuts and stuff like that uh, aren't the best because they've got a lot of starch to them and that starchiness creates like a softness to it. So they're better for like sauces, I believe. Uh, uh, whereas things like almonds, you know, super crunchy. Um, things like that. So I'm just going to put these in my mortar and I'm just going to give these a bash 
while I bash, I'm going to come around and have a look and see if anyone's saying anything. I lost one on the ground, by the way. Lentil like that. Uh, does the rosemary go in with the liquids? Yep, that's all good. Oh, there's more with the koi. Yes, yeah, just FYI, everyone. I have 10 videos. Oh, that's you, Rachel. <laughs> I hope I'm not um, freezing up too much. Uh, okay, so I've bashed these up and I really haven't done a lot. So if you've got panko breadcrumbs, they're just as good. Um, but the classic sort of Aussie style, sort of, sh you know, eggplant shitty style breadcrumbs are also fine. But let's have a look, see if I can show this to you. I really haven't done a strong breakdown of these. You know, you can do it more if you want. Anyone, if, if you've also gone ahead and you just zhuzh them up and they're a bit too fine, totally okay. No stress at all. But I just thought, you know, because our breadcrumbs are relatively fine, this would be a really wonderful sort of change up. So you might get some good crunch on that. So my collie uh, mixture is boiling now. I'm just going to turn that down to a medium and just get it to simmer away. Because we cut the collie so fine, this really won't take long at all. Uh, Rachel, as in like back of house, Rachel, how long have I got, by the way? Because I just want to make sure that everyone sort of gets to at least the oven stage and then they can just, you know, play it by ear from there. Uh, you've got until as long as you need, Simon. Uh, yes, we're trying to wrap it up by eight, but if you need to go longer, no problems at all. Delicious. I'll put a song and dance on. Thanks, mate. Uh, right, okay. So with the oregano, I shouldn't, I just did it on my own. So grab the stalk. And then all you're gonna do, excuse me that it's empty, but uh, grab the stalk, all you're gonna do is grab your fingers on both sides and just gently pull against the grain of the of the oregano. So it's sort of like this, you go, and that'll strip it out. Whoopa. If not, you just pick it off by hand. But that, especially when it comes to mint, it's the fastest way to do a lot of oregano, a lot of mint. Making mojitos, coming into summer, everyone. Once we're out and about, heavenly, promise you. I can actually show it to you as an example with the rosemary. So here, I'll show you. So you've got the rosemary like this, a great trick. Watch this. So anyone who's over there, if you don't do this already, you've got a lot of rosemary or, or sort of herbs to pick for everyone. You grab, you know, sort of the top end. I mean, there's a lot of rosemary here. So you grab, grab wherever the top end and you just slide your fingers down. And that just completely strips it. Perfect. And then you can use this, especially with rosemary as a skewer, like a veggie skewer uh, would be fantastic for the barbecue. <laughs> can confirm why it's like a charm. Thanks, team. <laughs> I love that. All right. Well, I'm not going to. Uh, well, I've got a whole lot of rosemary now, so I might use that later on. Okay. So the oregano, um, you can leave it whole if you want. I'm just going to give it a rough chop on the chopping board. Uh, and then I'm going to throw that in with my my almond mixture in the in the mortar and pestle, right? But we're just going to leave it in the mortar and pestle. There's no point in pouring it into a bowl and, you know, dirtying enough another bowl. There's already enough mess. Cool. Really rough chop. And then straight in with the almonds. Happy days. We've got our, um, uh, what are these called? Breadcrumbs. They go in. Let's season this as well. A beautiful little season. So salt and then some black pepper. And then the baked feta, before anyone starts putting them on, um, the baked feta. Let's wait there. And what we're going to do is just before we put it in the oven, we're going to sort of dot it around. That's what I love to do with that one. Because really what we're trying to do here when it comes to baking this sort of ingredient, uh, this dish, is the baking part, all that really is is just to get the, the breadcrumbs crisp, right? Like everything else is cooked. We don't have to cook pasta. We don't have to do anything like that. Like the pasta is going to be cooked in a second. But the breadcrumbs, that's all that's really important. Speaking of pasta. Firstly, everyone, clean up your boards. Clean up your station. Make sure everything's tidy. I'd love to. I love how I'm saying this now and I can't seem to find it. I love to have a tea. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I love to have a tea towel right next to me and just wipe the chopping board down. If you've got a partner with you, uh, get them who, if they're not cooking, if they're sitting there drinking wine and doing nothing, they can sub in and wipe down the chopping board. Make sure everything's nice and clean. I've got three people I'm cooking for tonight. They're all hanging out in their rooms, so, you know. Oh my gosh, right. Uh, behind me is salted pasta, uh, salted water. Um, they always say salty like the sea. You know, don't use good salt when it comes to salting water. So I've got some of this um, just, you know, sea salt or flake salt, and I don't have any, I ran out of my cheap salt to use for pasta water. So 
you know what? Oh my gosh, get me in trouble. I'm actually not going to salt the, the pasta water at all. Uh, there's a little trick. I could tell you otherwise. You know, you're on the other side of the screen. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know if I'd sold that water at all. However, I'm telling you the truth. There's no salt in this water and I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, oh gosh, take me to jail. Right, pasta, open that up. It says 250 grams. Again, you can add more if you want. Um, it's going to be delish. This is awesome pasta. I love this pasta. Righto. So pasta in. You can, you know, I've done this. I've done this with hoop pasta before. I've done this with everything, you know. I, you literally can make this dish with any pasta. It's just awesome. Okay, so make sure you've got your spoon. Give it a quick stir to make sure that it doesn't stick together. Check back on it every so often. What does the bag say? It says... Oh, God, maybe I do need glasses. I don't know what it says. I'm going to say about six to seven minutes. It's usually the time it takes to cook. Oh, here we go. <laughs> six to eight minutes. There we go. Six to eight minutes. So we'll check on that at six to eight minutes. And at this stage, my collie is doing good. Hey, Simon. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Could you just slow down a little bit? Um, yeah, and maybe of course. just go back a few minutes and just run over around to where you're at. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. 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 Slow down. Okay. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm back to it. I'm back to it. Sorry. 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 Um, can I get, where are we at? Uh, so 250 grams of the pasta is on the recipe. Um, that pasta bag is 500 grams and I literally just added it all in. I will, I will weigh up how much I use at the end. I'm so sorry for being uh, very loose, loose handed on that one. Um, slow down, slow down, <laughs> bag is 500 grams. Everyone use 250. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so the recap. The recap here, everyone. Uh, if someone could just quickly just do a quick type and tell me where I should start from, and I will just start from the, from the cauliflower is on medium heat and, and sort of like cooking away really slowly. Um, the nuts, yeah, okay, the breadcrumbs and nuts, fair enough. Okay, in my mortar and pestle, everyone, if you're doing um, a blended work, chuck it all in your blender. But in this mixture here, I've got my breadcrumbs, I've got my oregano, I've got my salt, I've got my pepper. Uh, you, can add, you can add so many things to this if you want to zhuzh it up a little bit. Uh, you can add, you can add cumin seeds, you can add fennel seeds would be really delicious. You could add some caraway. You could add so many gorgeous little nuts as well just to bulk it out. You could add more herbs. Don't add the mozzarella um, Charlotte just yet. The mozzarella will go into the cauliflower uh, when we blend it. If you have added the mozzarella for anyone who's there, um, it's fine. You will be okay. Nothing bad will happen. The reason why we don't add the mozzarella is because a lot of plant-based cheeses uh, use oil as their, as their major fat. Um, and that fat can, once it's cooked really high temperature, can split. And so you'll find yourself getting a bit of an oily uh, texture. Um, so yes, yeah, so that, that's the reason why we don't add the mozzarella until we start blending. Um, for those with the mozzarella, we use Demona, uh, in this recipe, you can use whatever ones you want. I know there's some great, um, I know there's some great ones out there, uh, that, that like, I think that the vegan dairy use a great mozzarella or have a great mozzarella. They do a great like chevre, like a plant-based chevre, which would work perfectly fine as well because it's super creamy. I think I've got a packet of that in the fridge. I'll, I'll grab it out and show you. Uh, and for the baked feta, we don't use the baked feta until we put everything in the oven as well. Um, so that's that's the reason. You can add it. If you want to add it to that breadcrumb mixture now, totally fine. If you've done that, you're okay. It won't be a problem. Uh, there's just sort of like little techniques that I like to do that I feel creates the best result. However, you at home might have, have a completely different opinion and you're perfectly allowed to do whatever you like if you feel it's easier for you. Um, and I guarantee you the end result will be fantastic. I hope. Um, are we adding the oil to the crumble mix already? Not just yet. Hold the line caller. Christy, in a second, um, we'll add the oil. 
let me see what we got. That's all right. So the reason why we're adding the oil is uh, we want everything to bind together. So we're not just like, so oil, the thing I love about oil and any sort of fats when it comes to cooking is it's the conductor of, of, of like energy, of heat. So if you add, uh, what can we do? If you add feta, no, sorry. If you add tofu to a pan that is dry, it just dries it out, right? Like it, it r removes all the moisture. But as soon as you add oil to that pan, that oil is the conductor of, of heat. And so when you add that feta, or sorry, I keep saying feta, when you add that tofu, you'll find that it fries. And so you're going to get a wonderful skin off it. So with this, the reason why we're adding the oil to the breadcrumb mixture is that when we put it on top of everything, it'll then get that wonderful heat from the oven and crisp up beautifully. That's the reason why we do it. Um, so the baking dish wise, I think I've got, I don't think I've got, do I have a, how good would it be if I had a measuring, measuring tape right nearby? I just feel as I do. This is the baking tin that I've got. Look, it doesn't, you know, all those wonderful, so this is a baking tin. So I think it's about, what's that, about, I don't know, six or eight inches by maybe nine inches, something like that. But this is a classic, I don't think I got this. Oh, it's an Ikea one, there you go. So it's a classic baking tray. You could use, you know, a, uh, a brownie tin, you know, the square ones. You could use, I just want you, I guess what I'm trying to say here, and maybe I need to give you more direction, but what I'm trying to say is use what you have at hand, right? So this is just a classic square one. Most of it will fit in there. If it doesn't, sick, I'll have some tomorrow for pasta, whatever. Um, but yeah, maybe a six by nine is the best. Uh, or a nine by 12 is fine. All you're gonna find is the depth of the pasta is shorter or bigger. How big the baking dish are we getting needing? Centimeters, mate. Okay, so uh, let's go 12 centimeters by 24 centimeters. 12 centimeters by 18 centimeters, they're about. All right, let's see how we're going. 20 centimeters by 30 centimeters. Perfect, Kyle. Perfect, Kylie. That's great. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Uh, Jasmine, where are you lost, mate? Do you want to just tell us where you lost and I'll give you a quick hand? This is perfect because by the time that we all catch up, all of the, uh, did the almonds go into the breadcrumb mixture? Yes, they did. And it doesn't matter if the oregano leaves are chopped or not. It doesn't matter at all. Really, it doesn't matter. This is a, a fail-safe recipe. If something goes wrong, I guarantee you I'll help you fix it. So, you know, Saturday night fun, everyone. That's the way it's at. So let's have a look at our pasta and see how it's going. We want to make sure that it's pretty close to cook through, but a little, little bit of texture is great. How's everyone else? Go? Can everyone go? Um, can everyone go and taste their pasta and tell me if their pasta is cooked? Because I want to know. And if it is, then we can move on. Mine is, thank you, that's beautiful. Yes, 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 pasta cooked, great. Can everyone strain the pasta out now, please? Thank you very much, I'll meet you at the sink. All right. Gorgeous. Let that drain, let that drain. Leave it alone. If you want to, you can put it back into the, uh, into the, you can put it back into the baking. Oh my God. If you want to, you can put it back into the pot. I'll show you. If you want to put it back into the pot, like so. Yep. Get some oil and just put some oil over to it. Cause as soon as the pasta starts to cool, it'll start to stick. So, and then toss it around. And that'll just stop it from sticking, okay? So let's just leave that to the side for the moment. Now, can I get those amazing humans on the other end of the screen to check your cauliflower? 
Is it really nice and soft and delicious? Give it a taste. Does it need seasoning? Does it need some pepper? Does it need some acid? Time to check your cauliflower peeps. That's right, is it soft? Yeah, feel low skill my enthusiasm. Rachel, I'm with you. Don't use stress. I'm here to have a great time. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that pasta ain't cooked. Don't worry, Rachel, we'll get there. And I reckon, because what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pretty much leave you at the time that we put everything in the oven and then we can play recap. So once I get all of it done and in the oven, we can sit here and we can talk about talk you all through. And anyone who's finished and gone, yep, I've got this, can bugger off and have a wonderful Saturday night dinner and wait for it to be roasted. And the ones that are still working on it, I can sit with you and talk you through it. And it'll be a, a nice little, you know, hangout sesh. So can I get some uh, hell's yeah if the cauliflower is cooked, everyone? Nice and soft. It doesn't have to be really falling apart. Um, uh, but, you know, soft is best. <laughs> Thank you, Tara. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Jamie. Natalia, oh, good. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Can I ask people how it's tasting? If it's tasting dip delicious, lots of liquid left. Is that right? That's totally fine. That's totally fine. You want to try and get the liquid to reduce, um, but what you're going to do is when you start blending that cauliflower, it will thicken up. Don't forget that. It looks like there's a lot of liquid, but really, it's going to really sort of like, um, it's going to really thicken up when you blend the cauliflower, okay? So bear with me here. The next stages for everyone who's got their cauliflower cooked, and even if it's close to cooked, if you've got a strong blender, um, I'll move it over, uh, then it'll work perfectly fine. Um, then let's blend it all up into an absolute sort of like creamy consistency. And now when we pour everything into the blender, what we want to do is add our mozzarella in now. Okay, so we're going to break it up and I'm going to show you. We're going to break up the mozzarella. Hi, have we got you, Simon? Yeah, can you see me? Yeah, I think we're good. Am I frozen still? We're no, good? I think you're good now. Okay. Right. So I think where we were up to was it was time to blend the cauliflower. And yep. the question was, how soft does it need to be? Okay, so how soft does the cauliflower need to be? If I get a fork and I'm going to burn myself, you know, it. <laughs> it's not going to be that bad. Okay, so I'm going to get one of the bum ends. So this is the... This is the stem, so the, the, the fork just just sinks in. If it's a little thicker than that, if it's a little harder than that, what you're gonna find is it won't be as creamy. So you can just put it on high for maybe another five minutes or maybe another couple of minutes, and then just cook it until that's soft, and that'll be perfect. Um, also, you'll find that if it's not fully soft, you'll be okay. It'll still be beautiful. If you've got a powerful blender, it makes all the difference. Um, we added all the ingredients to the wall. The water we had boiling on the stove. Yeah. Added all the ingredients to the, Rachel, what do you mean to the water? Did you add all the pasta? What did you add? We added all the ingredients to the water we had boiling on the stove, the pasta water. Yeah, I guess so. Did you add the milk as well? <laughs> Legends. Okay, cool. That's great. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. So we can fix this. All you have to do is just chuck it on high. If it has the pasta been cooked, Rachel. Okay, cool. Take the pasta out. Did you strain all the water out as well? Is the water all gone or is there still a mixture of water and, and, and oat milk? Okay, cool. So... Mm. 
we have the pasta in a separate pot to the water oat milk mixture. Great. Okay, so you did the water. I see what you're saying. Yeah. All you're going to need to do, uh, Rachel, is chuck the chuck the tampon high, reduce it down until you've got maybe, I don't know. I mean, you're gonna have to halve the amount of liquid in there uh, until it's sort of like a little bit thicker. But you should be fine. If you want to, you can also just strain out a little bit of water, the water milk mixture. That should be fine too. Uh, the herb, the herbs and stems have sort of come apart. That's totally fine. So is mine. Look at that. They're soft herbs anyway. There's a couple at the top. Let me see if I can find the rosemary. Oh yeah, see my rosemary is still okay. My time is, some of the time is gone. Some of the rosemary, that rosemary is completely gone. So if it's in there, you'll be grand. Don't stress. Yeah, good stuff. That's it, Rachel. Just uh, strain a little bit out. You can even save that mixture. If the if the blending, if the blending uh, becomes too thick, you can even just save that mixture and add it back in. Um, I used all the breadcrumbs. You're totally allowed to use all the breadcrumbs. Don't worry, I've used all the breadcrumbs as well. Because it was originally, uh, it was originally like a full head of cauliflower and we halved the mixture. Uh, and so, you know, that's where we're at. So I'm gonna add the cauliflower mixture to my blender. I'm gonna use a soup ladle just to make sure that I don't sort of, you know, splatter it everywhere just for the first little bit. Smells amazing. This is smelling so, so good. All right, about 10 minutes, everyone. Okay. I always get afraid there's a lot of liquid in this. Every single time I make this, I always get afraid there's a lot of liquid. All right, let's add that liquid in there. I'm gonna buddy go for it. Make it rain. Okay. Now, mozzarella. There's your mozzarella there. Let's peel break bits off here and put it in. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. That goes in there. Best you can. Okay, now let's blend this nice and slow. Now the reason also here is that the pasta is nice and starchy. So you're gonna find that that starchiness from the pasta will allow it to thicken up. So on low, to start with, let's give it a blend. Okay, I'm gonna let that do that thing and come over and see what's going on over here. How's everyone going? Adding liquid, what's really add now? Taste it, blend, beautiful. What onion? The half onion? I thought we would use the half the onion. <coughs> oh, the half onion uses use it to start. Uh, you have to cook that out with the collie and stuff like that. So if you miss that stage, don't worry, you'll be okay. Keep blending until it goes really smooth, okay? All right, let's have a look. That's thickened up very nicely too. Oh yes, now, if you find your mixture hasn't thickened up as much, you're more than welcome to stick it back on the stove and just let it reduce a bit more. Oh, that is good. So it's still a little runny, which I am very okay with. <coughs> Excuse me. Bring, I'm gonna come over and see if there's any more questions while we're here. Make sure you season it after that stage there. How are we doing, everyone? Blend until smooth, that's right. Season, yes. Tastes amazing. It's not too late to add it now. Always add it now. <laughs> it's just gonna have raw onion. No, if you're doing the uh, onion, I'll probably just leave that out at the moment because uh, it'll be quite hot and raw. And raw onion, I don't, I don't love unless it's in a, in a sally. You won't miss it, it's okay. It just adds a nice sweetness. Um, you know, you'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. So keep going with the cauliflower mixture.
Okay, so taking this mixture and eyeballing here how much pouring it in with our pasta. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm leaving a little bit in there. Left about 300 mils still in that pot just to make sure that I haven't overdone it because if you're using 250 grams of pasta, this is a big mixture for that. So Simon, are you just doing it to cover the pasta? Yeah, just to cover the pasta a little bit and make sure it's nice and wet. All right, that starch, when you put it in the oven to bake, will thicken it up beautifully. Oh, yes, give it a good stir. Make sure it's sort of get working its way in. All right. <coughs> Where's my baby? Here we go. All right, let me see. Any questions while we're here? Beautiful, we're good so far. Everyone's happy. Now grab your baking tray because this mixture is looking really beautiful. Grab your baking tray. Clean your mess up. Simon, clean your mess up. And now we're going to get our mixture here and we're going to start ladling it in. This is going to be awesome. I am so hungry. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yum. Because once you start cooking this again in the oven as well, that mixture is going to thicken up even more as it starts to reduce. Beautiful. I think I'm going to have, because I did, what did I do? I did 500 grams of pasta, didn't I? So I'm going to have a little bit more at the bottom of my pot, which is fine for me, to be honest. I'll have it tomorrow. Okay. Now I'm going to add a little bit more of that liquid on top of this. Yes, mate. All right, give it a shake. <laughs> Beautiful. Right. I've got a little bit past left in my pot. Chuck it in a Tupperware container. You know, take it to lunch. Take it to, well, no one's going to work really, are they? Take it anywhere you can. Okay, that's awesome. So that's all there. Can everyone see kind of where I'm at with that? How are we doing? Yes. Add a little liquid on top. Perfect. Cheese after blending. Cheese when you're blending. I think we're starting. Everyone's everyone seems to be okay. I'm Rachel. I'm loving these little step by steps. That's awesome. Maybe I should have started off with that. Okay, and here comes that beautiful breadcrumb mixture. Get your hands in there and layer it really liberally over the top with the nuts because this is just gonna soak up some of that gorgeous sort of creaminess, the cheesiness, that cauliflower flavor. It's gonna add extra herbage. Simon, can you just recap for us the ingredients in the breadcrumbs? Yeah, of course. So in the breadcrumbs, which I just, by the way, whoever wrote that a while ago, told me about the oil. Yeah, add that oil in, but that's okay. So in the breadcrumbs, we've got broken up almonds. We've got breadcrumbs. We've got oregano. Um, and we've got salt and we've got pepper. So that's just going to go over the top. If you haven't had the oil yet to that uh, breadcrumb mixture, that's totally fine. And if you do, sort of add it in now, or uh, sorry, add it in at the start or whatever, and then give it a mix around and add it on top. So I'll show you what I mean. So add it in, and then you've got more of like a sandy style consistency. And then you can add that sandy sort of consistency on top like this. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now, over the top, over the top, over the top. Now, this is where the baked feta comes to play. Everyone who's there, 
This is where that wonderful, the poor baked feathers is sitting there, hanging out all on its own, just by itself, pick it up, break it up into little pieces, and it's just sort of rained or placed in a very purposefully unpurposeful position over the top. You know, if you have a lot, chuck as much on as you want. It's like sort of like cheese on a pizza. Have as much as little as you like. Mm, and it adds that saltiness, which is really wonderful. And a slight acidity, which I absolutely adore. Okay, and then if you have some salt as well, final flourish of that over the top. Final sort of few cracks of pepper over the top. There we go. And then a wonderful sort of, again, a bit of olive oil, just back and forward. And that, everyone, is ready for the oven, which I've got preheated at 180 degrees. <coughs> I lost my rosemary. Um, Simon, just Preheated at 180 degrees. Just a question for you. The baked feta, could you give us a little bit of a rundown on baked feta? Yeah, so the baked feta is uh, done by Demona, this one, actually, which is really beautiful. And it's made from almond meal um, that they blitz up super fine with a lot of fat, um, some... I think nutritional yeast from memory and then, you know, oil and they emulsify it with emulsifiers until it becomes set. They pour it into a baking tray and they bake it in the oven until it's like, like quite textural and, and, um, and strong, you know, tough. And then they add that to a brine or so they add that to an oil jar it up and they sell them at most sort of, I don't think they sell them at Coles and Woolies. They sell them at most of like independent supermarkets. So I've got one down the road called, uh, Apple, ginger apple crispy apple happy apple down the road i can never remember the name of it and they sell it there so any of those um uh any of those sort of amazing sort of beautiful little local uh either markets or supermarkets are where you're going to find it they're really really gorgeous i know the people at um uh who else does some uh there's a few others around so if anyone has any lists of their favorites uh, be sure to write them in the notes below. Um, there's some really great ones. Vegan Dairy, of course, do a great one, as always. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. I, can't, you know, I don't know why, but I can't think of any at the moment, which is really weird. Um, baked feta in the kit is made from macadamia, and it's botanical cuisine. Sorry, Rachel. It's, the, it's, the, it's that one. <laughs> so there you go. The Botanical Cuisine also make one, and so do Demona, uh, which is great. So there's a heap of out there at the moment, which is fantastic. And they made from Macadamia. Cool, that's really good. Isn't that beautiful? Um, how is everyone going? Can I get a thumbs up for anyone or like a hello or like a, you know, we're all good on the comments just to let me know that everyone's on board. So once you've got this stage here, you know, it looks super inviting to me. That looks delicious. That looks delicious. So chuck that in the oven at 180 until that top goes nice and golden brown. Make sure you get a nice bit of oil on top. If you have a bulb of garlic and you want to go crazy, dump a bowl of garlic, push it in the middle, and then that'll roast and you squeeze it over the top at the end. A really cool trick. Um, but I love this. So I'm going to throw this in the oven now, 180 degrees until it's nice and golden. You know, it could be, depending on everyone's, you know, it could be 10 minutes, could be 20 minutes. It depends on everyone's ready. I mean, I'm going to come back and I want people to show me where they're up to. Hold on tight. In the oven. Yes, good, great. Okay, people, talk to me. The results from chaos. That's right. Was it too chaotic? I'm so sorry, everyone. What? <laughs> so, Simon, how long do you recommend that people cook it for now before they eat it? So throw it in until the top is nice and golden. If you want to add the uh, the grill on just to help it out, speed up the process, you want to hurry up and eat, add the grill on top because that grill will just golden up the top super, super quick, which means everything's hot and happy days. The reason why I do the oven is because that breadcrumbs are going to mix in with the, the wonderful creamy sauce. It's going to thicken it up a little bit. It's going to bubble around the edges and get nice and sort of golden. That's why I use the oven. Uh, totally fine grill or oven, happy days. Just be careful it's in the grill. 10, 15, 20 minutes, depending on whether you're fan forced or not and how good and new your oven is. Um, and, uh, and other than that, we're ready to go. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I know, cool. Okay. So um, does anybody have any last questions oh. for Simon before we wrap it up? Just throw mine in the oven. I haven't even thrown mine in the oven. Coming. We drizzle garlic oil, olive oil on top. Yes, mate. Becca, you champion. Oh, you're from Humble Jumble. Anyone who hasn't seen Humble Jumble, jump onto Instagram. Um, go have a look at that. It's absolutely awesome. Uh, right. So I want to ask everyone another reminder of where the vegan mozzarella is from. That's Demona. Google it. You can get it a lot of – if that is Demona, right, Rachel? I'm pretty sure this one is Demona. Um, Google it. You can find it at most sort of like small producers. Um, so a salad on the side, that's a really good question. I mean, I love a classic. If you have some, you know, I'm a big fan of iceberg. Love an iceberg. Finely diced iceberg or cos or leafy greens or bitter greens. Um, sort of maybe like 30 mils of mustard, seeded mustard, Dijon mustard, not English mustard, some vinegar. So uh, 30 mils of vinegar and then 60 mils of olive oil and then salt and pepper, shake it up and drizzle on top. Perfect. I like a very vinegary style uh, dressing as opposed to that classic vinaigrette. That to me is a really good one. Add some tomatoes. You got an avocado, fantastic. Something nice and bitter or sort of fresh to counterbalance everything. Um, I want to make sure that everyone, if you can, if you're close by, turn your cameras on. If, are they allowed to, Rachel? Is that possible? And uh, take a photo. And uh, I want you all to post it up of you and I cooking along and tag me, Simon Tui, on Instagram in the stories, and I'll be sure to tag you back. Uh, I cannot wait to see the results. Glasses of champagne. Where's my drink? Happy Saturday, you amazingly beautiful human beings. Uh, it's so good that you're all here and smiles on everyone's faces. Oh, this is where I want to be every single time. So grab a photo, grab a screenshot of the food when you cook it, send it to me, tag me in it. And I really would love to uh, have a chat to you if you've got any questions down the line. I'm on my phone uh, until you have pulled it out of the oven. So Simon Tui on Instagram is me. Uh, if you've got any problems, just message me and I'll answer them for you over my socials. Happy Saturday, everyone. Have an amazing night. And I hope it was absolutely delicious. Um, amazing. Thank you, I'm trying, thank you, Natalia. Thanks, Simon. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Rachel. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thank um, you, Simon. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Thanks to Perrin Market. Thank you, thank you. Oh, one last question. Oh, yes. Was there a question? Uh, I didn't hear it anyway. I think Kia. we're good. The one last okay, Kiara, Tal, Chris, Jessica, Becca, Charlotte, Bev. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Amazing. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.